And we are back on the Zero Hour. I'm Richard Escal, and in this segment, co- upcoming in a couple minutes, we will be talking about millennials and Social Security, which brings me to my opening remarks uh, on this topic. We are now in day 21 of America held hostage to MSNBC's refusal to correct the misinformation which they provided to viewers of The Cycle, a t- panel television program which is geared toward millennials, and specifically the misinformation uh, uh, provided by billionaire heiress Abby Huntsman, who um, misinformed. Uh, now, again, as I always say, you're entitled, as everybody always says, it's a cliche, you're entitled to your own opinions, but not your own facts. Abby Huntsman significantly misrepresented the facts, misled viewers of MSNBC. We've asked nicely, a lot of people have asked M- nicely for MSNBC and the cycle to correct uh that misinformation they did not do so in fact ms huntsman doubled down on her deception with one minor tweak or correction she doubled down on it about a week ago so what does that tell us that tells us you know producers love controversy they love controversy because it increases ratings now in this case the, it shouldn't be a controversy you know abby hoff uh, abby hoffman i call her that all the time abby huntsman uh, i apologize to abby hoffman is god rest his soul But um, Abby Huntsman, uh, you know, said, uh, hey, man, it's not about me. Uh, That was part of her reaction last week. No, it's not about you, because the very same arguments that Abby Huntsman is giving, the very same misinformation and deceptions that she offered in her commentary were offered by a journalist named John T. Flynn in 1938 when he also opposed Social Security and was willing to bend the facts to do it. John Flynn was discredited at the time. It's been offered in the 50s by people with a right-wing agenda, and President Eisenhower, a Republican, convened a commission to look into all of that, a commission of insurance executives. And Republicans and Democrats conclusively found that what Abby Hoffman and her ilk says is wrong and misleading. Of course, the billionaire Pete Peterson has been promoting this kind of thing for a long time. So no, it's not about her. It's about the misinformation and whether uh, uh, the advertisers on MSNBC will allow their dollars to be used for that purpose. So quickly, before we go into our segment, I just want to let you know who some of those advertisers are whose money is being used to mislead, because I think it would be good to educate them on them. Bayer, which is good, and elite both uh, are sponsoring this through through Phillips and um, and the Bayer Corporation, which is good because the, all this stuff is uh, giving me a headache, and I'm sure you too. Nestle, E Trade, Golden Corral, Purina, which by the way is going to be the primary vendor of food to seniors of the Abbey Huntsman's of the world. Get the way, uh, a place for mom, uh, BP. Who else but British Petroleum, right? Bank of America. Who else? And Prudential who ironically uh, ran an ad during Abby's latest misleading rant, which uh, talked about how seniors needed the right numbers in order to plan for their future. I believe that Prudential believes that, so it would be good for them to know that their dollars are being misused to misinform people about their financial future when they enter retirement. So, you know, somebody probably ought to let them know. Maybe some viewers will do that. With that, I want to introduce Stephen Rosenfeld of... um, of Alternet, who has written a number of great pieces. I always read Stephen's work. And uh, he did a terrific piece for them called How Deficit Hawks, that's, you know, these billionaire-funded and Wall Street-funded groups, are pitting millennials against seniors to attack Social Security and Medicare. Stephen, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, you heard my rant. Did I? you disagree with anything I said? No. You know, and and the thing about this is... um, Hey, and I, f- former executive producer of an Air America radio, remember that network show? You know, I know all about, like you do, that, yeah, you know, conflict, you know, so, you, you know brings ear, ears, you know, eyeballs and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, there are some things that are really, what's the right way of saying it? They, they shouldn't be the subject of propagandizing because they really, the bottom line is it has to do with how everybody and everybody's family ends up being treated. You know, are we going to get enough after a lifetime of work and, and putting, you know, money away every week into social insurance programs? And, and, you know, in politics, people, they pick all kinds of fights for, for purposes they don't entirely reveal. And what's so interesting about this, what's happening around Social Security is just as the conversation is changing, 
which is to say it's not dominated by people who say, cut, 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 cut. It's actually people are beginning to say, not enough, but beginning to say, hey, what are people getting? Is it going to be enough? Is it going to be indexed for inflation based on what really are cost of living increases for you know, for the elderly, people who are, are you know, or, or people who are in their senior decades. Just as that's happening, what happens? Well, the right-wingers who, who want to privatize this so they can collect a fee on every single dollar saved, um, they, they start trotting out old arguments, basically to divide people. And one of the favorite ones, and this is, what, you know, this is where, you know, you know Dear Abby... Um, is playing, you know, is playing a big part in this, and I don't think it's unconscious. Um, you know, one of the big ones is, well, the, the, these old folks are, are are well off, and they're taking money away and opportunity away from the from the young, and the young people today are struggling more than ever. So, and it's just a false choice, and it's not just her. We hear it from the head of polling at Pew, Paul Taylor. Paul Taylor has NPR as as a podium where all those. Wealthy, educated listeners are believing they're getting something that's unbiased, and it's not. And the thing is, what I wrote about was... Yeah, you know, I mean, I just have to cut in to say the name. Paul Taylor, uh, you know, what he's done is outrageous, as you point out. And, uh, I, you know, subliminally, you know, and this was not deliberate, but look, it's called the Pew Trust. If you can't trust the Pew Trust... A pew is in a church. A trust is trust. Who can you trust? I mean, I digress a little bit. But, you know, you're absolutely right. These these arguments are as old as the sky. The only thing I would disagree with you with maybe a little bit is that I think with Abby Huntsman, it may be a little. She's probably, my sense is she's just being fed her lines and told what to say. Well, I don't really know. You know, the, the truth is, well, I, I don't know. You know, we, we, can, we can speculate. But the thing is, the thing that, that I found really notable is that, one, just as we're seeing the conversation shift, certain old attacks return and, and quickly are given credence by virtue of how they're, they're treated you know, by, by you know, fairly you know, important media platforms. You know, MSNBC is not insignificant. NPR is not insignificant. You know, and, um, and what happens is, what I wrote about was that we saw these exact same lines and tactics come up in the 1980s. The last time Social Security um, was a major reform bill was before Congress. We saw the same editorials in U.S. News and World Report. And we also saw, which was really amazing, um, some of the libertarian think tanks publishing articles talking about how this generational divide was the only kind of strategy that that would work um, because Anybody who's in middle age or older knows very well that, the, you know, they're not going to fall for it. Um, they know very well that, that they've been paying their entire lives and they expect some kind of financial security coming from Social Security and some kind of health care benefit coming from Medicare. And that well, you touched on something very important there, Stephen, and I, I, I don't want to... I don't want to neglect it. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and that is this. You touched on the Cato Institute and what they called achieving a Leninist strategy. Maybe you can tell our listeners a little bit about that. Well, you know, it's amazing. In, in all areas of sort of right-wing you know, political history, there seem to be these founding documents that lay out the ideas for um, what ends up being you know, decades of conservative you know, ideological activism. And there's, there, there, there's one for this whole generational divide notion when it comes to Social Security. And it, it's an article whose title you just read. It's got that crazy, you know, Lenin, Lenin, in, Lenin in the title argument. But it basically says, um, you know, the, the libertarians don't like the idea of any government program that works on a large scale. They also believe that a small number of people, like the founders, you know, can, can cause a revolution, so what they've done, what they did in this article was they were saying, well, if we can just have enough people on our side who can start, you know, planting these seeds of discontent among the youth and say stuff like, you're never going to get anything, and it won't be there when you're older. None of that is true, and, and therefore create this sense of moral in indignation. You know, the, the how dare you take money from my pocket because just so you can, I don't know, go to Florida again. 
<laughs> right, right. You play, know? play, <laughs> shuffleboard, or all those, you know, really offensive, actually offensive cliches about older people. So, you know, and, and again, this is where I have a problem, and this is where, you know, you, you, you touched on this, you didn't go into the side of it because, you know, you can't do every topic at once, but, you know, Kate, again, it's okay to disagree. It's okay to have a radical libertarian philosophy. I mean, my attitude is always show me where that's ever worked. It's okay to have that philosophy. It's not okay to lie, mislead, and deceive the way the, the Cato, is it fair to characterize the Cato memo as suggesting that people be misled by telling them that the money won't be there when there will be money there and money continuing to oh, come in? Yeah, yeah, listen, so here's what's so interesting about this. Yes, that's all in there. But fast forward to today. Now, you know, since, since um, in, in the last decade, there's been a lot of Wall Street money. You probably talked about Pete Peterson, you know, he, you know big Wall Street investor, who's put literally hundreds of millions of dollars into think tanks and university curriculum and all kinds of stuff to create this notion that the worst crisis facing America is the debt, which is very arguable. There are many other crises we might talk about, but that's not the point. So, he had, so what happened was he created this organization in Washington, and they put some like young Republicans on the top of it. It's called the Can Kicks Back. And this thing, these guys were exposed in emails a couple weeks ago as being they're concerned about the debt, but they ran out of money, <laughs> so it was very embarrassing. Well, one of the guys who was leading this decided to run as an independent for Congress in Pennsylvania, the northeastern corner of the state. And he's running against a Tea Partier, this conservative Republican, Tom Marino, who was anti-Obamacare and pro-gun and, you know, the whole da-da-da. So, but anyway, Marino wrote this fundraising letter two weeks ago, basically saying that this guy, uh, Nick Triano, who's running against him from this Pete Peterson group, it, he, says, he says, why are Pete Peterson and kick the can so dangerous? They're, this is a Republican. Their goal is to increase tax loopholes for the largest corporations in the country, and they plan to pay for this corporate giveaway to the Fortune 500 by cutting Social Security benefits for older Americans. Now, this is not you and me, you know, these lefties, you know, talking. This is a Tea Party Republican member of Congress calling out, you know, this this, this ruse. And well, that's a great point that you make in your piece, Stephen. We're talking with Stephen Rosenfeld of uh, of Alternet. You know, it's a great point that you make because this, you know, the, the support. Uh, there was a, a poll done about three years ago which showed that seventy six percent of self described Tea Partiers want to. Sp- protect Social Security, and don't believe it should be cut for the deficit or, or, or any related reason. So I think what you're getting to here and what your piece underscores is that there's the opportunity for a left-right populist coalition to protect and expand these programs, and that it's a losing agenda with the public, but unfortunately in this week of the McCutcheon decision, a winning agenda with billionaires. And I guess we have about a, a minute and a half left, so any closing thoughts? for us? Well, yeah. I mean, look, you know, in, in politics, there are people give a lot of arguments. They give a lot of one-line, one-dimensional arguments for, uh, for, to, to try to sway people's attention or provoke them when the complexity of issues or com- complexity of life is, is, is much grayer. This generational divide is a complete ruse. And the fact of the matter is, is that if we fix Social Security by just very simply getting rid of the cap on income taxes, the wealthiest people pay into the system, it will fix it for everybody, including and, today's millennials. And, and just in closing, I would add, and, and I know you know this, it will fix it for everybody forever. So, you know, it, it always strikes me that these millennial spokespeople, these paid millennial spokespeople, are always saying the old people are going to take your money, so let's instill a program that lets the old people keep the money and takes it from you. So, Stephen Rosenfeld, thanks so much for being with us. I'm sorry we were running out of time, but everybody should read his piece on Deficit Hawks uh, Pitting Millennials Against Seniors. It's in Alternet. And, Stephen, thanks so much for being with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And we will be right back after this talking about wage theft at McDonald's with someone who practiced it. I'm RJ Escow, and this is The Zero Hour.